Good morning to all. In computer network, today's class is going to be about wireless transmission. In the previous classes, we studied about the physical layer that is the theoretical basis for the data communication where we studied the Fourier analysis and how the data rate of the channel and guided transmission media. That uh, transmission media we studied, what is transmission we studied and the transmission is of two types, guided and un unguided. In guided we studied that if it is going to be done through the wire it is called as the guided transmission. If it is not with the wire it is going to be wireless transmission. How the transmission can be taken place without wire? That is only through the air. Okay. So how it is going to be? That is only we are going to study today. Okay. In this, first we are going to learn about electromagnetic spectrum. What is this electromagnetic spectrum? Means how the air space is allocated for transmitting the signals. That is called as electromagnetic spectrum. Radio transmission which is telling about how the transmission will be, okay, radio signals will be. Next, microwave signals transmission, how it will be and how the infrared and millimeter waves and how the light wave transmissions. So, all these five things we are going to study today. In this first one, electromagnetic spectrum. What is this? So, actually, what is frequency? The data is going to be transferred from one place to another place in the form of zeros and ones. Okay. If it is going to be in the analog mode that is through the wire it is going to be uh, transferred as a sound and a signals. And if it is going to be transferred through the air means it is going to be in the form of signals. So the signal will be in the form of waves. Okay, when there is 1, it will be up. When there is 0, it will be down. So, the number of ups and downs will be called as the frequency. So, how the frequency, how many ups and downs is going to be taken place on a particular time will be called as the frequency. So, this is the formula which is going to be used to calculate the frequency of a particular, particular transmission. So, first we are going to learn about how it can be used for transmitting information. So, what radio waves, microwaves, infrared waves and visible lights, how it is going to be used to transmit the information. How? By modulating the amplitude, frequency or phase of the waves. By using all these three things, it, the transmission is going to be taken place. What are the other ways to transmit the signals? It can be ultraviolet light, x-rays and gamma rays. So they are also better for the higher frequencies. And this is also having some disadvantages. What is the first disadvantage? It is very hard to produce and it is also very hard to modulate and it does not propagate well through the buildings and it is dangerous to living things. First one is the hard to produce means the signals, the rays which we are producing is not very easy and this cannot, this also cannot be modulated easily and this will not propagate through buildings also and when, when these signals have been passed through the air, it is very dangerous for all the living things. In ancient days, in our uh, previous generation people doesn't have much diseases but nowadays in all our generation many people are getting different kinds of diseases because of these kinds of different types of rays which are passed in the atmosphere. So this is one of the reason which people are getting many problems, many diseases. And next one, national and international agreements about who can use which frequencies. For example, if it is going to be a government agency, what are all the range, okay? In which range they can use this frequency. The, if it is going to be a, a radio station, uh, how they have to use it. So the limit, what is the limit of them? If it is going to be the mobile companies or some other th companies, what is the range for them? So that is called as national and international agreements. Okay. So this is called as the electromagnetic spectrum, which is telling about the allocation of the frequencies in the atmosphere. Okay. 
This is the picture which is going to tell about how the allocation has been done for each transmission medium. So here it is telling about the wavelength, wavelength in space. Okay, so in the space what is the wavelength will be and th for this particular wavelength which kind of medium can be done for the transmission. And here in the upper part, you can see the frequency it is specified in hertz. Okay, so ELF is telling about extremely low frequency and VB, VF means voice frequency, VLF means very low frequency, LF means low frequency. So that is called as the allocation spectrum. That is means the in the air how the signals are passed in which all the range they can use it. That is only given in the picture. So you see here, here the optical fiber which can use this signal range. Okay, so from 10 power 14 to 10 power 15 it can use it. So radio signals how can use it. Microwave signals which is telling about ultra high frequency, so super high frequency and then extremely high frequency we can be used by the microwave radar and microwave antennas. All these things can use it. And if it is going to be the radio, it is using the medium frequency and then high frequency. Only these two things can use this radio for radio and the televisions. And for the power and telephone, uh, rotating generators, musical instruments, voice microphones, they can use this low frequency only. So these are all the different types of allocations on frequencies, how the transmission can be done through the air. Okay. Next we are going to learn about radio transmission. So radio waves, it is a kind of waves. These waves can be easily generated and it can travel through long distances. That is why we are receiving the radio, FM radio, all these things, no? So before that and all, all India radio, we heard, we heard the news in that like that. These radio waves can travel long distances and it can penetrate buildings easily which can pass through the buildings also easily and it is omnidirectional already we have studied unidirectional bidirectional omnidirectional which can travel in all the directions so this is about radio waves and what is the properties of the radio waves it can work at low frequencies and also in high frequencies if it is in low frequencies it can pass through the obstacles well okay it can uh, it can uh, sharply with the distance 1 by r power 3 in air and if it is going to be in the high frequencies it can tend to travel in straight lines bounds of obstacles and observed by the rain during the rain we cannot receive the signals uh, properly in the radio no so sometimes we will be getting some problems so that is because of the rain so it is interference from motors and electrical equipment from all those equipments it, it can be interference and you can receive the signals in a proper way so this is called as the radio transmission next one is vlf and lf and mf bands okay that we have seen in the figure so these radio waves follow the ground so it can be detected for 1000 kilometer at low frequencies from the earth surface to 2000 kilometers it will be called as the low frequencies so it offer relatively low bandwidth okay it is providing only low bandwidth hf and vhf bands which is having the waves reaching in the ionosphere means we have studied the uh, atmosphere has been divided into layers then right so the first one is the ionosphere which has been refracted and it can back to the earth that is why we are receiving the uh, receiving the waves that means noise homes use them to talk long distances okay that means radio operators which can use uh, to uh, talk in you know, long distances. Next one is the electromagnetic spectrum. How it has been divided. Okay. So this one is the frequency hopping spread spectrum. And here direct frequency spread spectrum. That is only code division multiple access CDMA. So when we are getting the phone and all. We will be getting two types of phones. What are they? The CDMA and GSM. 
GSM and CDMA. GSM means Airtel, Aircel, all these companies. CDMA means Reliance Company, which is having a particular code. Through that code, it is going to access the rays. But here, this frequency hopping spectrum will be spreading the frequency and it is going to receive it according to the signals which it has been passed. So, this is called as spread spectrum ultra wideband communication. Clear? Next one is the, this radio transmission from the earth surface to the ground wave, it will be easily it can transmit. So, if it is going to reach the ionosphere means again it has to send back to the antenna, from that it has to transmit to the other place, that is only given in the points, that is VLF, LF and MF bands radio waves follow the curvature of the earth. And then in HF band, they bounce off the ionosphere. If it is going on the ionosphere, they will be bounced back. Next one is the microwave transmission. So microwave transmission is about 100 megahertz. Okay, it will be travel in straight lines. It will be narrowly focused. And for the long distance telephone transmission systems and all, this will be used. And the microwave communications which was used in the company AT and Bell Laboratories was using this communication. Here we need a repeat us, okay, which has to repeat the signals which it is received in this particular center. And it will not uh, penetrate the buildings well, okay, and it is using multi-path fading, which is nothing but some divergence, some refraction could have been taken place. So that is called as multi-path fading. So the problem is it could have been observed by the water. Means during the during rain the signals could have been observed. So this is called as microwave transmission. And what is the use of this? It will be used by the long distance telephone and the cellular telephones and the TV. And what is the advantages over this fiber optics? So it does not need not right uh, does not need the right way. So this microwave tower for every 50 kilometer is necessary. Means we need to have the microwave tower only up to 50 kilometers. But here in the fiber optics, we need to place the wire in each and every line which we are using it. And it is relatively inexpensive. We know that if it is going to be, if the tower is going to be placed on a particular place, it occupies much expensive amount with the antennas. So this will be expensive. Next, industrial, scientific and medical bands. So here, this, this will not require government licensing. So all these kinds of companies does not require any government license spectrum. Okay, cordless telephones, garage door openers, wireless uh, hi-fi speakers, security gates, all these things in all the places, these can be used. And it is having higher band so that it is more expensive electronics and it is interference from the microwave and radar installations. So this is uh, about the ISM, Interstitial Scientific and Medical Bands we study now. So what is the uh, megahertz for the each and every band, okay. So the first one could be from 100 to 255 and uh, specifically from 5.25, 3.5.35 megahertz, uh, 100 megahertz and if it is going to be 83.5, it is from this gigahertz. Okay, so this is about ISM and this bands which is used in the United States for the wireless devices. Next one is the infrared and millimeter waves. For short range of communications, for example, in our home we are using the TV. In TV we are using the remotes. Okay, so to use the remotes, uh, how can we use it? When you press on the remote, a particular ray will be passed. That ray will touch the light of the, the screen of the TV. Through that it will operate. Yes. So that is called as remote controllers. So that is also called as a ray. So it is used for TV, VCRs and stereos. And it is relatively directional and it is very cheap and easy to build. It will not pass through the solid objects. So do not interface between rooms and in security better than the radio systems. It, uh, it, it doesn't require any government license to be done. And it is indoor wireless LAN. So while you are using the remote, if any people are passing or something, some uh, some, some object is there, na, that ray will not be passed through the object. So in home only we are going to use it. It doesn't require any license. Okay. Next, light wave transmission. 
it is a unguided optical signaling what is this unguided optical signaling it will be used to connect lens in two buildings via lasers which is mounted on rooftops which is just going to be uh, placed on the rooftops it is very high in bandwidth very low in cost and it is relatively easy to install and it does not require any license okay and it need to aim accurate it is going to give the accurate thing only one disadvantage that laser beams cannot penetrate rain or thick fog so if it is going to be rain or a fog it cannot be done we will see the figure so see, look at the figure there are two different buildings on the top of it there is a photo detector and there is a region of thermal seeing and heat rising on the building so this is the laser which is going to receive the signals and it is going to detect it and it is going to identify it that is only convection currents can interface with the laser communication systems that is bidirectional system with two lasers in the picture okay so from here this convection current is by the heat it is going to be produced by using the sunlight it is going to be transmitted so that it is called as convection currents so it is going to transmit the signal here the laser is going to receive the signal and it is going to transmit the information through this way this is called a light wave transmission so with this we will finish this topic okay the remaining we will see in the next class